Hi students, this is AJ sir. Let's study 10th standard ICSE math chapter 7b proportion. Let's understand the concept of proportion. If we have four numbers such that A ratio B is equal to say C ratio D, we say that the four numbers are in proportion. Now there are some properties. If A upon B is equal to C upon D, then A is the first term, this is the second term, third term and the fourth term. Here A and D are called the extremes and B and C are called the middle terms or the means. So if you cross multiply them, you get A into D is equal to C into B. That means the product of the extremes A and D is always equal to the product of the means which is B and C which is common sense really so again A ratio B C ratio D here D is the fourth proportional so the fourth term is called the fourth proportional now in continued proportion we have only three numbers involved that means A ratio B is equal to B ratio C note how B is same on the LHS and RHS. That means A upon B is equal to B upon C. Then we say A, B, C are in continued proportion. So in such a case we don't have any fourth term per se. The second quantity B is called the mean proportional between A and C. And if you cross multiply you are going to get B squared is equal to AC. So remember only for continued proportion the square of the mean is equal to the square of the extremes. So tick these boxes so that during revision you can read them. In solved example 19, cancel the alternative method. Let's prefer the first one. In solved example 20, I leave it to you regarding which method you want to use but try out the K method. That's something which is very useful in most sums. Now in exercise 7b, let's do 1.2. Find the fourth proportional to these. Three terms are given, so we'll assume the fourth term to be x. That means first term upon second term is equal to third term upon fourth term. We have to write the statement in the beginning, of course. And now you cross multiply and get the value of x. And whatever answer you get after reduction, three ones are three twos are a cut, a cut, a into a is a squared, so the answer is 2 into 2, 4, A squared, B squared. That's your fourth proportional. Next question, 2.2. Find the third proportional to this and this. So only two terms are given and the third proportional is asked. There is no fourth proportional in this sum. That means if we assume the third proportional to be X, the ratios will be the first term upon second term is equal to second term upon the third term which is the third proportional we have assumed so that means mean square will be equal to the product of the extremes if you cross multiply we get this notice that a square minus b square can be split into a plus b a minus b the reason we should do that is so that we can simplify further and this is the final answer which is the third proportional Next in question 3.2, find the mean proportional, that is the middle term. Here two numbers are given, but we have to find the middle term, which will assume it to be x and the ratio becomes first term upon mean term is equal to mean term upon the last term. If you cross multiply, you get this. Here we can remove a square common, so do that. That means a minus b bracket also appears twice, so that will also be written as a square. So the whole thing is a square. That's good because now the x squares square can be shifted and we will write the square root of this. The squares disappear and this is the final answer. That's the mean proportional. Now, the fifth sum. If this, this and this are in continued proportion, find x. Continued proportion means that the denominator of the first fraction is the same as the numerator of the next fraction. That's what it means. That means 
it's a upon b is equal to b upon c there is no fourth proportional in such cases just cross multiply them and get the final answer we have to remove the square root here of course sixth sum what least number must be added to each of these four given numbers to make them proportional let the required number be x so on adding we get four new numbers and then they would be in proportion continued proportion is not used here so it's a upon b is equal to c upon b and now just cross multiply them open the brackets x square x square gets cancelled get all the like terms together and the numbers on the right hand side and get the value of x that's the required number to be added so the actual numbers if they would have asked would have been 9 upon 18 is equal to 23 upon 46 which makes sense because that will be equal to half each next 7.2 is an imp sum a b c are in continued proportion we have to prove this and some extra information is given now if any extra information is not given that means it would be a very simple sum we use the k method we substitute the values in the lhs and we get it in terms of k we do that same thing in the rhs and we get it in terms of k and that's how we prove them equal let me show you how so let a upon b is equal to b upon c is equal to k that's our opening statement of always so that means b is equal to ck if you cross multiply this b is equal to ck also a upon b is equal to k so let me write that down a upon b is equal to k so if you cross multiply i'm getting a is equal to bk a is equal to bk fair enough but i just found that b is equal to ck so i will substitute that again out here so this becomes a is equal to ck into k and that is a is equal to ck squared so a is equal to ck squared so i got b and a both in terms of ck so that will be useful in making the sum very simple so remember in the k method this is what we always do we say b is equal to ck and a is equal to ck squared now here some extra information was given but what's the use of that well definitely we'll have to find some value and substitute it while solving it lhs is too simple so no substitution will be required here we will have to substitute it in the rhs but which term should we replace it notice how this has the number 2 and even this has the number 2 so that's a hint that here we will find the value of 2 and then substitute that value out here so we start off with the given data b goes down so i get the value of 2 but i would like to simplify this further so this equation 1 all the values of b and a will be substituted in terms of c and k i want everything to be only in terms of c and k so that the lhs can also be converted into c and k and so with rhs and then lhs will be equal to rhs so a is how much ck square b is ck and even denominator b is ck c will remain as it is so after substituting i get this can we simplify this further well i can remove c common out so only k minus 1 remains in the bracket and the c and c become c squared so c gets cut k gets cut so denominator disappears i get the value of 2 as this so notice it has only c and k a and b have disappeared that's my aim so this is equation 2 now we start with the rhs or you could have started with lhs here wherever you see a and b just substitute them in terms of c and k from equation number 
2's value was ck k minus 1. I have written that out here. A is ck squared. B is ck. Again, A is ck squared. This is from equation 1 and 2 both. Let's simplify this further. Here, I can remove ck common out. So k plus 1 remains in bracket. Now, anything can be cut. Yes, c and c cut k and 1k cut, also 1k and 1k cut. So what is left in the numerator is c, k minus 1, k plus 1, which is nothing but c, k square minus 1 squared. That's your RHS. I can't simplify this further. So I'll have to now start with LHS. a can be written as c, k squared. c is written as it is. Remove c common and you get c, k square minus 1. That's from equation 1 here. Now notice how LHS, RHS are equal, hence proved. The next sum is the ninth sum. If Y is the mean proportional between X and Z, what does that mean? It means X upon Y is equal to Y upon Z, or I can say Y squared is equal to XZ. Show that this is the mean proportional between this and this. So first of all, y square is equal to xz because y is a mean proportional and you know the square of the mean proportional is always equal to the product of the other two terms. And we have to prove that the square of this is equal to the product of the other two terms. Only then will it follow that this is indeed the mean proportional of these two terms, which is what is asked in the question. So we'll start with the LHS here. Don't open the brackets. Clearly, we will have to substitute this equation 1 to solve further. One thing I notice is y is common, so take it out common. And when I take it out, please give it the square sign, because the square is for everybody inside. And this y square can be substituted as xz, so write it out here. We can't solve it further. So let's start with RHS now. It's this multiplied by this. Now somehow we have to reach this. And I see that this has no y, it's only in terms of x and z. So that's a hint that we have to get rid of y even out here. Instead of y square and here y square, write xz, xz. So here x is common, take it out common. Here z is common, take it out common. So it becomes xz. And we have the same bracket twice, it's multiplication, so write x plus z the whole squared. And now you notice that LHS is equal to RHS, which means that this is the mean proportional between this and this, because I just proved that the square of this is equal to the product of this. Next, the twelfth sum. If y is the mean proportional between x and z, the moment you read this, what comes to your mind? Y is a mean proportional. Yes, y square is equal to xz. And we have to prove this. So write y square is equal to xz. Start with the LHS. Notice that the denominator has power minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. That means we'll have to do the reciprocal of that. These are, these are the laws of indices. Notice there's a minus sign here and plus sign here. So it looks like a very complex fraction. So definitely we'll have to substitute y square as xz here and here. The benefit of doing this is when we want to remove LCM, it will be easy if everything is in terms of x and z and there is no y in the picture. So I substituted this as xz and even this as xz. So now the LCM is x square z square. There's no y in the LCM. That makes the calculation easier. So this will be into z square into z square into xz, into xz, into x squared, into x squared. So now the numerator of this denominator becomes xz squared minus xz plus x squared upon x squared z squared. The denominator's denominator goes to numerator. And notice how this numerator and this denominator are actually the same. So they get cancelled. So I'm left with this which is nothing but xz the whole squared, but xz is y squared. So this becomes y raised to 4 
which is the RHS. That's how LHS is equal to RHS. Next, we have the 14th sum. By the way, 7.2 is IMP, 9th is IMP, 12th is IMP, 16th is IMP. Now, the 14th sum, find two numbers such that the mean proportional between them is 12. Well, let the two numbers be A and B or X and Y. The mean proportional is 12. What does that mean? That means 12 square will be equal to AB. That's one equation. Another condition is given. The third proportional to them is 96. That means A upon B is equal to B upon 96. So let's write down these two conditions. First condition was that the 12 is the mean proportional. So 12 squared is equal to A into B. Because we have assumed the two numbers to be A and B. Now, from here I can get the value of B or I could have got the value of A. Either way, we get equation 1. Next condition was that the third proportional is 96. There's no fourth proportional here. So A upon B is equal to B upon 96. Cross multiplying, I get this. Now let me substitute the value of B from equation 1 into this equation. So it becomes 144 upon A, the whole square is equal to 96A. And now we'll just cross multiply and get the value of A. So I got a cube out here, cut, cut, and we get 216. And A is a cube root of 216. The answer is 6. Substitute this value of A in equation number 1 back again to get the value of B. And that's how you get the two required numbers. Now, the 16th sum. It is given that P upon Q is equal to R upon S. And we have to show that MP upon NQ, the whole upon Q, actually they should have put brackets out here, is equal to MR plus NS, the whole upon S. Now, there is a hint given out here, but I would like to prefer to use the K method. So, I'll assume P upon Q is equal to R upon S is equal to K. So, as you rightly guessed, R is equal to SK and P is equal to SK squared. But in this sum, if we try everything in terms of S and K, we won't be able to solve further. So, I will leave P is equal to QK itself. Yes, it's always a trial and error. And even before solving, you should have the foresight of what's going to happen a three steps down the line. Or you can use such manipulative methods like this if you can remember it. But the K method is the easiest one, even though it's longest. So instead of P, I wrote QK. And everything else remained as it is. That's why I was able to remove Q common and Q got cancelled and I got MK plus N as the LHS. Now you know why I didn't use P as SK squared because if I would have written here SK squared, then I couldn't remove anything common here. So how would I solve ahead? That was the hint. The RHS, again, same method. Instead of R, I wrote SK from equation 1 out here. So that S can be removed common and it can be cut and I'm left with MK plus N, which is why LHS is equal to RHS now. And finally, the 17 sum. Two conditions are given and this has to be proved. I'm going to start with the more complicated condition. I'll do LCM, so that's S plus Q upon QS is equal to MR, M upon R. Cross multiply it, so R into S, RS plus R into Q, RQ is equal to MQS. Now, MQ, as soon as you notice this, you should realize that they have given the value of MQ as Q plus R, P plus R. So that's what we will substitute here, but make sure I write the reason. So that when you open this bracket, you get PS plus RS, distributed multiplication, and RS, RS gets cancelled, and I'm left with this, and you rearrange this, you will get P upon Q is equal to R upon S. Hi students, if you found this video useful, press the like button. Also to enroll for my online lectures or online test series, email me or message me on Instagram 
Check the description for more information.